Welcome to the top 20 worst lines of dialogue in Game of Thrones. For most of these rankings, I'll be judging the lines off of stupidity, contradictions, cringe factor, delivery, the person saying it, and if the line even has a point to exist in the first place. With that in mind, we have number 20. Does she like it gentle or rough? The finger and the bum. As you can tell, we're starting out very strong with a terrible attempt at comedy from Euron Greyjoy. And you may be thinking, if this is at the bottom of the list, then it must be looking pretty grim for the rest of the rankings. However, for this line, it's mostly just cringy and stupid to the point that it completely discredits Euron as a menacing character and makes him seem like a laughable and comical villain. I would say this line would be worse if Euron was set up as a more serious villain, but that's not the case, and to me this line is the highlight of the worst aspect of his character. It is a short line, but a finger in the bum has gained the status over the years as being one of the most repulsive lines in the show, and it's become a meme within the community. Number 19. There is land in the reach. Good land. Make it your own. Start your own house with the Unsullied as your bannerman. This is obviously a very stupid proposition, but at least it's the thought that counts. Despite the Unsullied having no way in furthering their succession given that, you know, they physically can't reproduce, it's just really silly that one of the smarter characters in the show made this massive oversight in his pitch to appease the Unsullied. Also, this is basically just Davos trying to bribe the Unsullied with something they clearly don't want, in an attempt to distract them from killing Jon. Feels bad, Davos. You made it all the way to the end of Season 8 until David and Dan wrote this stupid line for you. Number 18. I'm the man who killed Jaime Lannister. I know I said a finger in the bum was one of the worst Euron Greyjoy lines, but this one tops it ever so slightly because it's just flat out insulting, on top of it being cringe as well. The delivery of the line and that smug face that Euron proudly displays just makes me want to punch my TV screen. But at least Jamie didn't die from the stab wound and instead died to bricks, which is also a very anticlimactic way to die. Just thank god it wasn't directly from this homeless degenerate. It really bothers me knowing that Euron died arguably one of the happiest people in the show with the false notion that he killed Jamie Lannister. Number 17. You're the Lady of Winterfell. You deserve it. We're standing here because of you. The battle was lost until the Knights of the Vale rode in. Now this line is by no means disgusting, but it's just straight up idiotic. It really tilts me that in this line, Jon says that they won because of Sansa. Meanwhile in reality, they almost lost because of Sansa by her not telling Jon about the veil. That and I mean, Jon did the vast majority of the work in the battle, and Sansa rode in at the very end and cleaned up the kill. It's really saddening to me that Jon isn't absolutely angered by this, and instead thanks Sansa which is completely wild to me. He should have yeeted her ass over the wall they were talking by for the treason she committed. Number 16. You want a good girl, but you need a bad pussy. Ah uh, yes, the classic line that made everyone fearful of David and Dan's writing ability. Since this is one of the first dreadful lines in the show's history, it really came as a shock to a lot of viewers. Because before then, there was nothing comparable to how bad the dialogue was in this single line. We went from George R. R. Martin's intellectual writing and extensive use of literary devices, to David and Dan's repulsive nonsense. Like, why did they even write this line? It serves absolutely no purpose other than being cringe. On top of the line portraying the Sand Snakes as being horny tweens on a quest to have sex with Bronn. Truly a low point for season 5, and the first red flag for how bad the writing can get in the later seasons. Number 15. I wanted those elephants. This is one of the briefest lines on the list, but to me, I think it does a lot of damage. Now, this is firstly a poor example at comedic relief, and the reason why I'm including this in the line isn't because of the line itself, but the character who's delivering it. The fact that Cersei, one of the most serious and strict people in the show, is now making quips like in Marvel is flat out jarring and character breaking. And I know David and Dan try to pass it off as comedy, but it literally adds nothing of value other than a cheap slapstick joke to the start of the scene. When did cheap humor turn into one of the core traits of Game of Thrones? It completely goes against her character, and it immediately paints her as being a less menacing villain in a season where she already has nothing to do. If you were to add a laugh track after her saying that line, it easily fits. I wanted those elephants. <laughs> Number 14. Now Varys's ashes can tell my ashes. See? I told you. So in a nutshell, 
Tyrion rambling complete nonsense. Like, what the hell even is this line of dialogue? What kind of garbage is entering my ear canal? Now Varys' ashes will tell my ashes, see, I told you. Tyrion, are you okay man? It honestly looks like Peter Dinklage is traumatized from the pure dog shit quality of dialogue David and Dan has given to him to say throughout season 8. This is such a completely random line that doesn't necessarily insult or upset me, but it just flat out confuses me as to why it exists. Number 13. Maybe it really is all cocks in the end. So before going into this line, most cock jokes are pretty terrible lines, but most of them are delivered by characters who are more reserved for comedy, like Bronn and Euron. But the fact that Jamie is delivering this line really makes me lose hope in the show. What an outstanding writing technique that David and Dan have developed. A motherload of cock jokes. So yes, Jamie, maybe it really is all cocks in the end. Number 12. I don't want to see the city burn. I don't want to hear the screams of children burning alive. No, it is not a pleasant sound. I, I don't want to hear it. This isn't just one line, but more of an exchange between two supposedly smart characters. One initial big issue with these lines is the objective they're trying to achieve. Cersei has clearly made up her mind and is a really stubborn character, so the fact that Tyrion even proposed to try to convince Cersei to surrender is a lost cause. Then we get to the actual exchange between Kyburn and Tyrion, and what Tyrion says has to be the most unconvincing thing he could have possibly have said. His main point of persuasion is, I don't like this and that? Really? This is coming from the character that could feasibly talk himself out of any scenario in the earlier seasons, and that was the best he could come up with? You would think that Tyrion would at least make a good case for them to surrender, and this would be a scene he could finally show off his intellect, but yet again, David and Dan drop the ball. Number 11. Everywhere she goes, evil men die, and we cheer her for it. And she grows more powerful and more sure that she is good and right. This is basically David and Dan using Tyrion as a mouthpiece to justify the Mad Queen arc for Daenerys. You're telling me that Danny snaps because people were cheering her on for doing the right thing? Like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Daenerys killing the Masters and the Calls because they were genuinely bad people. She was liberating and saving slaves, or breaking people out of a toxic culture by killing those villains. In other words, she had a pure and innocent objective, and killed the obstacles that were in her way of achieving that objective. Now, when you apply this to the destruction of King's Landing, her objective was to liberate the people from the tyrant Cersei. But, for whatever reason, Daenerys decides to blatantly kill the innocent people she was trying to save. Like, she actually has no reason to burn down the city of King's Landing, it doesn't serve her objective at all. It would only make sense that she burns down the Red Keep to kill Cersei, and in the process, killed innocent people as collateral damage. So the fact that Tyrion gives such a stupid reason as to why she acted the way she did, I think easily deserves an 11 spot. Number 10. Take this and go. I don't know how to use it. Sticking with the pointy end. I think that is single-handedly one of the stupidest things anyone has ever said in the show. And there is a lot of competition for that honor. You're telling me that Sansa, the girl who survived and overcame Cersei, Ramsay, and Littlefinger, can't wrap her head around using a simple knife? Like sure, if she was handed a bow and arrow then that would be understandable, but a knife? Really? There's only one simple way to use it, and the fact that Arya had to say stick him with the pointy end was just a cringy callback. Also, this line that Arya said in the episode prior did not age well after this interaction. She's the smartest person I've ever met. Number 9. I don't really want anymore. This singular line has to be one of the most contradictory lines to ever grace television. The fact that David and Dan set up this notion along with Bran saying this. I can never be lord of anything. And the three-eyed raven. And then the reveal at the end of the show that Bran did indeed want to be king of the Six Kingdoms makes me lose brain cells. Did David and Dan forget these lines were in the script when they wrote the ending? Was Bran lying this whole time? Did David and Dan just want to subvert our expectations by randomly picking Bran as the king? It just doesn't make any sense when your character clearly says something and then acts in a completely opposite manner. The textbook definition of character breaking. Number 8. What's she like down there? What? That's not your concern. 
Tyrion saying this line to Jaime is the most disgusting and abhorrent thing to ever come out of his mouth. Did Tyrion actually think that Jaime would have answered this question? He's literally just spewing garbage out of his mouth for the sake of being the quote unquote imp. But that also confuses me because why is Tyrion suddenly reverting back to his more perverted mindset all of a sudden? It can't be because he was drinking a little bit, because he drinks in practically every scene he's in. The only reason I can see David and Dan making Tyrion say this line is to randomly change the topic to Jamie and Brienne having sex, so that when Bronn walks in, he can say something funny about it. But in the process, I feel like David and Dan utterly degrade Tyrion as a character, and at the same time, is extremely disrespectful to his brother, someone who he values the most. Number 7. I'm gonna do a killer when I see one. I take back the stupidest line title from Sansa not knowing how to use a knife, and I now gladly give it to Arya saying the most obvious thing in the world. Thank you Arya, it only took Daenerys to destroy an entire city for you to make that groundbreaking realization of her being a killer. Then again, she has a pretty hard time at spotting killers given she was snuck up on by the Waif as a suspicious old lady. But hey, give Arya her time, she's a bit slow at coming to conclusions. Just, overall, the sheer audacity of Arya saying this line after what just happened is like slamming a pan into your face after you went through a traumatizing event other known as watching the destruction of King's Landing. Number 6 There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. It shocks me that David and Dan think that this is some kind of massive revelation that makes a great king. The delivery of Tyrion saying this line makes it sound like this is some groundbreaking trait for a king that we've been missing all along. But no, it really doesn't matter that much. The fact that you, of all people, think that stories are the most important factor for a king when you are Tywin's son is very depressing. Ah yes, a good story is more important than being benevolent, strong, motivating, and having wisdom. It's about having all those qualities and more, which is why Varys was so obsessed with Jon being the king. Purely an unintelligent take from Tyrion, who does not fail to disappoint in the department of brain power. Number 5. At least your balls won't freeze off. You take great offense at dwarf jokes, but love telling eunuch jokes. Why is that? Because I have balls, and you don't. Funnily enough, these lines were so damaging to the point that I put the overall moment of this exchange as the 25th most stupid moment in the show. Which is hard to do because the moment is purely dialogue driven and nothing happens that affects the story. But the dialogue on its own is so offending to the characters saying them that it thoroughly upsets me. Not to mention that these are the opening lines of the season. What a magnificent first impression David and Dan, thank you. It sucks that Tyrion and Varys' relationship has devolved into a degrading wasteland of cock jokes. Especially since their duo was arguably one of the best in the show for seasons 2, 3, and 4. But any intrigue I had left for this pairing is instantly shattered with this opening line and makes me just want to shut off season 8. Like how can people rewatch this season when that is the opening line of the season? What a joke. Number 4 I told you I don't want it. It doesn't matter what you want. I don't want it. I don't want it. Daenerys is our queen. She shouldn't be. You are my queen. I don't know what else I can say. You are my queen. While she... She... is my queen. I'm cheating a little bit with this number, but there is no way I couldn't not put Jon saying the same two phrases all season. For these lines on their own, they aren't bad and are just a very bland response that you can give. If it was said once or twice, then it would have been whatever. But the fact that in almost every scene Jon Snow says, I don't want it, or you are my queen, has to be the most lazy writing in the show. It's mind boggling to me that this season took Dumb and Dumber two years to write, but they're over here copy and pasting lines from different scenes. Also, this bland response that is used excessively completely ruins Jon Snow as a character. He becomes a hollow pit of a human when this is the deepest his dialogue really gets. That's why these lines bother me so much not just because of how poorly they are used, but also the fact that it kills my love for Jon Snow. Number 3 Why do you think I came all this way? I know most people would probably put this line as number 1, but to me, the next two are worse. Anyways, 
Bran saying this line after going an entire season of saying he doesn't want anymore, and that he can't be lord of anything, is the biggest contradiction in the show's history. That smug little smile he gives after the delivery of the line makes me want to dropkick him out of his wheelchair. Also, this line raises a lot of questions in terms of what Bran meant. So, does this mean that Bran can see the future, and that is why he came all this way? If that is true, then did Bran let the destruction of King's Landing play out? Was there no better way to get to the outcome of Season 8? My only conclusion now is that Bran was selfish and wanted to become king and this was the only set of events that could make that happen. Which would again be contradicting because he came across as the least selfish person given that he didn't want anything. Unless he was lying I guess? I don't know anymore. My brain is imploding in on itself trying to decipher their horrendous writing from Dumb and Dumber. Number 2 If not for yourself, if not for her, and for every one of the million people in that city, innocent or otherwise. To be honest, I never really cared much for them. Innocent or otherwise. I think it's really impressive that David and Dan were able to ruin a whole character arc that was built up the entire show with a single line of dialogue. Wow. The amount of incompetence on display here is truly breathtaking. Do they not understand Jamie at all as a character? One of the best scenes in which Jaime tells Brienne the truth of him killing the Mad King and how he cared about the innocents is butchered now. Again, this goes back to the two years of writing of season 8 and the fact that this is the best that Dumb and Dumber had to offer really makes my blood boil. Look how they massacred my boy. Number 1 And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? The reason why I think this line is the absolute worst is that it both doesn't make any sense and that the primary climax of the show hinders on this single line and it fails so badly. When I was watching this live, I literally bursted out laughing. The fact that Bran having the most interesting story is a determining factor for being the king of the six kingdoms is brain dead. I can maybe see Bran as a king, but the reasoning for it is not there, chief. Out of all the characters to choose from, Bran definitely has the most boring story. His story was so exciting that David and Dan didn't even include it in Season 5. If they didn't turn him into a dull piece of dirt that had no emotions and cared about nothing, then sure, maybe he would be a good king. But Bran in his current state is by no means a good king. Considering that, he potentially let King's Landing get destroyed by Daenerys since he alluded to seeing the future. I wouldn't want someone as king who is that selfish and is willing to let unimaginably horrible things happen to get what he wants. By that definition, Bran is a psychopath. If Tyrion actually took the time to listen to other people's stories besides just Bran, then he would have been like, never mind dude, your story is a snooze fest in comparison to Arya's journey. But overall, Tyrion's logic for determining a king is more than just being idiotic, it's downright offending to the intellect of how smart the show used to be. There it is. Those are my top 20 worst lines of Game of Thrones. Initially I also wanted to do the 20 best lines of the show, but I feel like that would practically be an impossible video to make because of the sheer amount of good lines that exist. That, and to do the best job possible, I feel like I would need to rewatch the entire show to find any hidden gems, and that would take a very long time. But regardless though, if this video does really well then I'll definitely consider it, and let me know if you have any suggestions for ranking videos or what your least favorite line in the show is. Thank you for watching.